Have you ever wondered what will the world look like with 9.7 billion people? How will aging populations and youth booms reshape global economies? Can countries like Japan and South Korea overcome their demographic challenges? What opportunities lie ahead for Sub-Saharan Africa? And how are Western countries preparing for their demographic transformations? The world's population is changing. It's growing, aging and becoming more urbanized. This transformation is reshaping the way we live, work and interact with each other. These trends present both opportunities and challenges for societies around the globe. As populations grow, there is potential for economic expansion and innovation. However, there are also significant hurdles to overcome. Understanding these demographic shifts is crucial for policymakers, businesses and individuals alike. By analyzing these trends, we can better anticipate future needs and plan accordingly. Let's start with the big picture. Our world is growing. We're looking at a whopping 9.7 billion people by 2050. But here's the kicker. This growth isn't evenly spread. While some countries are dealing with rapidly aging populations, others are experiencing a youth boom. Let's look at some examples. In the UK, the population is set to hit 77 million by 2046, with the number of people over 85 doubling. Meanwhile, Japan is facing a different challenge. With one of the oldest populations in the world, they're dealing with labor shortages and sluggish economic growth. For South Korea, the average number of children born to a woman is expected to fall to 0.68 in 2024. Sub-Saharan Africa, meanwhile, is projected to experience the fastest population growth. This region's youthful population and high fertility rates will drive significant demographic changes. By 2050, the median age in sub-Saharan Africa is expected to be around 25 years, compared to a global median age of about 36 years. Now let's do a deep dive into each of these regions. Japan and South Korea, two Asian powerhouses that have seen some massive changes in their population over the last 60 years. Japan has gone from being a country of youngsters to having one of the oldest populations in the world. Today, nearly 30% of Japanese are over 65. By 2050, that number could hit a whopping 38%. In the 1960s, the average South Korean family had six kids. Today, it's dropped to a jaw-dropping 0.68. That's the lowest in the world. Both countries are facing some serious challenges, including shrinking workforces, strained healthcare systems, pension pressures, etc. And the big question, how to keep their economies growing? So, what does this mean for the future? Will robots fill the labor gap? Will these countries open up to more immigration? Or will they find a way to boost those birth rates? There could be several adverse effects by 2050 due to declining population and rapidly aging society. The working age population is expected to decrease dramatically, leading to labor shortages across various sectors. This could significantly impact economic productivity and growth. A smaller workforce and reduced consumer base could lead to slower economic growth or even contraction. Higher health care and pension costs for an aging population will strain government finances. A smaller tax base from the reduced working population will make it challenging to fund these increased costs current pension system may become unsustainable with fewer workers supporting a larger retired population. Increased demand for social services for the elderly coupled with reduced funding could lead to gaps in social security. Fewer children could lead to school closures and a need to restructure the education system. Changes in population composition could lead to shifts in housing demand and potentially impact property values. A smaller population and potentially weaker economy could diminish global economic and political influence. A smaller pool of young people could impact military recruitment and national defense capabilities. What about Sub-Saharan Africa? Many developing countries, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, are experiencing rapid population growth. Nigeria, as the most populous country in Africa, is likely to continue this trend. Countries like Nigeria typically have a very young population structure. This youth bulge can present both opportunities and challenges for economic development. 
A larger population could increase economic and political weight on the global stage and particularly within Africa. Growing consumer market could attract more foreign investment and economic partnerships. A larger, younger population could increase soft power through cultural exports and diaspora influence. Growing working age population could position it as a significant source of labour in the global market. However, when the demography of a developing country improves, the demographic dividend, that is skilled manpower, moves out to greener pastures. As a country's demography improves and a larger proportion of the population becomes working age and skilled, there may not be enough high-quality job opportunities within the country to absorb all the skilled workers. This can lead to emigration to countries with more developed economies and better job prospects. The US remains the world's largest economy and a hub for innovation, particularly in technology and research. This provides attractive career prospects and potential for high earnings for skilled professionals. On that count, let's talk about the Western countries. How has the immigration story been historically? The history of immigration policy in Anglosphere can be broadly divided into two periods, pre-1970, where the immigration policies were European-centric and post-1970, where the focus shifted towards multiculturalism. For example, the White Australia policy, formalised in the Immigration Restriction Act of 1901, continued to restrict non-European immigration up until early 1970. In Canada, immigration policies prior to 1970s favoured British, American and European immigrants. The Immigration Act of 1952 gave the Canadian government broad discretionary powers to limit immigration based on nationality, ethnicity or occupation. Starting 1970s, most Western countries started adopting policies favoring multiculturalism. The US maintained a stronger focus on family reunification compared to the other countries. While Canada and Australia adopted points-based systems earlier and more comprehensively than the others. What were the impacts? Immigration has generally contributed positively to economic growth in these countries. Skilled immigrants have helped address labour shortages in various sectors. Immigrant entrepreneurship has been a significant factor in innovation and job creation. Increased cultural diversity has transformed these societies, particularly in urban areas. Immigration policies have influenced diplomatic relations, particularly with source countries. Diaspora communities have played a role in shaping foreign policy priorities. Immigration has been a factor in international agreements and negotiations such as trade deals. Success in the coming decades will hinge on how well countries can formulate policies to harness the demographic dividend. Tapping into this dividend isn't automatic. It requires strategic policy formulation in various domains. Moreover, in our increasingly interconnected world, countries must compete to attract the best and brightest from the global talent pool. Those that succeed in creating an environment that nurtures innovation and growth will have a significant advantage. This means developing policies that not only attract skilled individuals but also retain them. These should include investments in research and development, fostering environment that is supportive to entrepreneurship and startups, etc. With this understanding, what are the specific domains that stand to capitalize from these emerging demographics? Well, there is widespread agreement on the outlook of certain domains like artificial intelligence, biotechnology, quantum computing and renewable energy technology, among others. Continued investment in R&D, coupled with policies that attract top talent from around the world, will be key for countries and entities to maintain their leadership. With increasing age of population, there will also be an increased demand for healthcare services, including geriatric care, chronic disease management, and long-term care facilities. This will require investment in healthcare infrastructure and workforce training. With climate change potentially making previously unarable land suitable for farming, certain regions in northern Canada and US could see new opportunities in agriculture. This will require investment in research and development to optimize crop yields and ensure sustainable practices. How could industries and startups prepare for this future? 
Companies could establish partnerships with industries to comprehend their skill requirements and craft educational programs that align with labour market needs and emerging technologies. Specifically, we can focus on STEM and vocational training to meet future labour market demands. Governments could increase funding for research and development to stay competitive. Further, foster public-private partnerships to drive innovation and commercialization of new technologies. For healthcare, invest in health technologies such as telemedicine, electronic health records and AI-driven diagnostics to improve efficiency and access to care. As we move forward, it's clear that adaptability and foresight in policymaking will be crucial. The demographic changes we're witnessing are not just numbers on a chart. They represent a shift in human capital, the most valuable resource for any nation's growth and prosperity. The future belongs to those who can see the opportunities in these demographic shifts and act decisively to seize them. The race is on and the stakes have never been higher.